All right, you guys, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we are rooting fig cuttings. And if you guys wanna be a part of this journey that we've been taking you guys along this fig season, please at this point, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. It really helps out my videos. And also check out the blog, figboss.com. We have so much fig related content there. And in fact, we're gonna be writing an entire article on this video so you guys can follow along in so many different ways to get the best information possible when rooting your fig cuttings. So today we are um, taking cuttings uh, from our fridge, actually. We've had these in storage. We took these cuttings in December. Uh, we took them in early December after Thanksgiving. And so these cuttings have been stored in my fridge in two layers of plastic for uh, three and a half, four months, which is pretty amazing. And so that's all that you need is a little bit of plastic here, two layers of plastic. I have the worst of the worst cuttings that I take every year, the ones that people don't want to buy. These are extremely thin Norino cuttings. And again, they get stored into this bag. And then I take this bag, partially seal it like 90% of the way. And then I put it into another bag, as you see here. And so just like the way I ship them, that's exactly how they can be stored in your crisper drawer in the fridge. And they are good for four, six, even maybe up to a year stored that way. Now, if you wanted to take cuttings, let's give you a brief lesson on taking the cuttings. Choose something higher on the tree. That's typically where more energy is stored. Um, you don't have to. I know a lot of people have different gripes about sizes and shapes and levels, levels of lignification, but pretty much everything will root really well if you just have the right soil moisture. If you really know what you're doing, doing with rooting cuttings, you're gonna see success. So these, these are some of the five gallon size trees I have here waking up in the, uh, in the greenhouse. We also have one gallon size trees that were air layers or cuttings I rooted last year that I didn't sell. And so these are not really great cuttings or trees to take cuttings from. They're young and particularly they could be susceptible to fig mosaic virus. Uh, they could have a lot of that disease or a severity of that disease. And so you wanna take healthy wood, typically from trees that I would argue are not really in containers. If the option, choose a cutting from an in-ground tree. Obviously you want specific cuttings from specific varieties, but an in-ground tree that's continually rejuvenation burned and cut back is gonna put out really nice and healthy growth. And you can take cuttings from that. That's probably the best bet. It has a lot of energy. It's from an established tree. And you can even take cuttings from a uh, higher point on the tree if that's up to you. There's no rule on shapes and sizes, as I said. There's even no rule on the number of buds. I know a lot of people make arguments for that, but you don't have to take six node or three node cuttings, excuse me. You can take one nodes, graft those. You can take the one node cuttings and root them. There is, again, absolutely no rules to that. I just wanted to highlight that's kind of a, a brief overview of how you can take cuttings. So now we actually have our, let's talk about our method here because we're doing a different method. Recently, we actually did a video on rooting fig cuttings and that particular method was about the fig pop method. And that was the first time I really had ever tried it. I was very curious to see, but then someone commented on that video and reminded me of a method that I, I don't know if I thought of it. I don't want to take credit for it. I had to go back and look uh, back at some videos I've done on rooting. But I mentioned in a video where I was talking about the fig pop method, how I just didn't like the fig pop method because you just have to um, transplant them. And so when you have the fig pop method and you're taking them out of this bag that you have them rooted in, let's imagine that this is filled with soil and just like the direct potting method here in my hand, instead of a pot, it's just filled with soil. And so you have the cutting here at the top sticking up, but you have to inevitably take it out of this bag to then put it into this size. And this is the one gallon size that everybody uses, right? It's, this is a four inch by nine inch pot. It's called tree pots. Um, I'll put the link down in the description for them. And so this is the perfect size, this trade, to sell, to plant them in this, to put them in larger pots, to transplant them whatever it is you wanna do. And so if you have a, a fig pop, you're just inevitably gonna to have to put it in there. And so if you're doing a thing that requires a high success rate, that you wanna increase the success rate and it's a repetitive task, you wanna simplify that as much as possible. By making things more complicated, you're making this whole process worse. 
you're, you're, you're enabling yourself to make more mistakes. More steps typically is less simple and you'll have a lower success rate. So for me, that's why I don't really like the fig pot method or in the past, but I was really curious to try it this year because the beauty of it is that if you keep this bag that I have here around the pot, around the soil and you pre-moisten that soil perfectly, you're gonna get the right ratio of soil to water, that five to one ratio that people talk about. And so what's nice is that you're pretty much gonna get them to root every single time by getting that perfect moisture content, the right temperature as well in your environment. It's pretty much a done deal. And so for a lot of people, it's a great method. But combining the two methods together, the direct potting method, the method that I've used in the past for many years that Harvey originally introduced, I would say this is the hybrid of the two and seems to have the best of both worlds so far. We're gonna find out. And so I know that there's a guy named uh, Notorious Fig, shout out to that guy, who was actually the first person to do that method on video. I don't know if he came up with it. Again, I think in the past I have definitely brought this up and thought of it. And then someone may have commented and actually said, oh, try this Ross. And then I never did. So it was cool that that guy actually uh, did it. I'm happy to try it. And now, so we're gonna do basically the best of both worlds today. And so now I have the cuttings. Let's talk about, again, the cuttings. Again, these are the worst of the worst cuttings, right? These, uh, these cuttings here are the thin ones, the, the scraggly ones. I always root these every year and I always have great success. We're gonna take our parafilm here, we're gonna stretch it, and then we're gonna wrap. We're gonna stretch it, and then we're gonna wrap. And so I'm gonna parafilm basically everything above the soil line. So about eight inches, nine inches, anything above that in terms of length of the cutting gets wrapped. Would I cut this cutting in half? You could, but it seems to me a bit unnecessary, especially with thinner ones that typically have a bit less energy. However, these thinner ones do root very easily. They root easier than the thicker ones. The thicker ones take more time, but they typically have a bit more energy. And they also tend to rot a bit less. We have a nice uh, cut on the bottom that's already calloused, and so I'm not gonna worry about that. That callus has happened over the course of three months. It takes about two weeks. When I make a new cut, and I will do one here, I'll score the bottom. And so this scoring of the bottom exposes that cambium and the hardwood, and this will eventually callus up as well. And this is where the roots can form in higher quantities. Uh, that's a good place there for that root formation. Also the lenticels, and the lenticels are formed at every bud in higher quantity. And you can see these white little dots here, uh, white lines or yellow lines along the branches. They're in higher quantities around the bud at every location of the bud, but they do form anywhere along the branch. And so you can form roots pretty much anywhere along the branch. You don't really need a bud, but obviously it's definitely um, preferred. Then I'm gonna take this uh, rooting hormone here, stick it in the bottom. This is Clonex. I'll put all the stuff in the description for you guys. And uh, it's optional, but I do recommend it. And then we're gonna stick this cutting in here pretty much all the way down to the bottom. Maybe leave yourself an inch off the bottom if you want. And then we're gonna take this pot. We have to label it actually, excuse me, we almost skipped that step. These are vinyl blinds. I've talked about these as well. These are the most easy and affordable tag that you can get in a high quantity. Vinyl blinds, very cheaply bought at the store. You write on them with pencil. That, that pencil lasts like one or two years. The tag lasts forever. They're extremely cheap. You put it in there in the pot. Then I'm gonna take the uh, produce bags I bought. I bought a roll of them for 350 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link to that as well. Open up these produce bags. Then we're gonna take the pot, put it in the produce bag. And then of course we got a rubber band. These are file bands, really nice long bands. And then we're going to put this band over the top. we do a little twist. And then we're gonna put this down here on the bottom of the pot. And so that's it. Now we're trapping in all that humidity in here. We are have the right soil moisture from the beginning. The soil was pre-moistened. We don't have to transplant this thing. We should have the best of both worlds in terms of rooting. And that was basically, guys, right there, a great lesson on rooting fig cuttings, hardwood cuttings in the spring. We're in this greenhouse. We got a nice temperature here. 
We don't have to water these things for a long time. And uh, hopefully in about one month, two months, we'll do an update and we'll have great success with these cuttings here. And that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, as I mentioned. See you guys for the next one. Take care.